What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Leak, and we got a special guest on the show, Eric Crocker, former NFL and Arena Football League cornerback, uh, host of Croc Talk TV on YouTube, owner of Rise Athletics and the Crocker Report, and also the, whole, the host of Striking Gold Podcast. Uh, good to have you on the show, Crocky. Oh, man, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so you're a 49ers fan, right? Yeah, diehard. Maybe maybe too big of a fan right now because I'm, <laughs> I'm going crazy over this uh, quarterback situation. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's cool how, like, none of the experts even really have a good grasp on what's going to happen. You know, I think because uh, Kyle Shannon is kind of going with this, like, unpredictable type thing or whatever. So, it, you know, it makes it a little bit hard to kind of get a grasp. But I think everybody's gathering as much information as possible and then see what yeah. the decision uh, Shanahan ends up making tomorrow night. Yeah, a lot of pressure on this pick, and there's going to be, you know, could be a lot of fan pushback if they go the way people are thinking. But Yeah. <laughs> um, so you play, you played uh, three seasons in Arena Football League. You had uh, 16 career interceptions. Is that right? E- yep. Yep. 11, 11 and one season in 2014 with Portland. That had to be a hell of a season for you with the Portland uh, Thunder. Yeah, yeah. I Yeah, I had a good year. Um, I just kind of got a grasp for what teams wanted to do, and, and I was able to kind of, like, capitalize on that. Um, I thought I did a good job of, like, kind of taking some risk, and I think any, anything in life, like, whether, you know, it's, you know, whatever it is, like, you're going to have to take some risk. And if you don't, then you're probably just not going to get as much out of it you take some risk, that's when you you, you come up big. So I took that's some awesome. risk and uh, I, I had a great year. So you you like to uh, you break down like secondary and wide receiver play pretty well. I sit down on your YouTube channel and all that. What do you think of the uh, wide receiver class uh, this year? Yeah, I think it's good, man. Uh, you know, you, you kind of look at it. There, there's a lot of different styles of guys, especially in the top five. I think they have some good guys that, you know, have the ability to play big. Um, even a smaller guy like Devontae Smith, um, mm-hmm. Jalen Waddle, because Waddle's only like 5'8", 180 or something like that. But they do a good job of, you know, making contested catches, playing above the rim. Then you have the big guys that play big. Um, but then after that, you kind of have like a drop-off in size. But you have a good, you know, this is a good class with the little tiny guys, right? The, the slot guys, the, the, the quick twitch guys that are able to, you know, create and get open in space. And there's a good amount of those, whether it's Rondell Moore, you know, uh, Elijah Moore, uh, Kadarius Tony, you know, and all those type of guys. So I think it's a good class for a variety of different type of receivers. That's awesome. Now uh, let's get into the draft a little bit here. The 49ers, your team, um, reports are it's down to Matt Jones and Trey Lance. Um, what are your – who would you prefer the 49ers to take at three? Uh, Trey Lance. Trey Lance for sure. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of good that comes with Matt Jones. I think, you know, especially the 49er fan base, they're, like, pushing back on him, like, all the way. Like, they just despise him and don't want him. You know, I, I'm not there with him. I think he's a very talented quarterback. I think there are things that he does extremely well. Um, I definitely see the added value with him being in Kyle Shanahan's offense. But, you know, I, I look at it like Kyle Shanahan helps Matt Jones more than Matt Jones helps Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. You know, I feel like, you know, if you trade all that up to go to, go to three – like, why not have a guy who can take your offense to the next level? And what I mean mm-hmm. by that is just be able to expand on the things that you already do. So, you know, I look at a guy like Trey Lance, and while he still, you know, has areas where he needs to grow, he has the ability to do all those things and more. Mm-hmm. Now it's just, you know, him being able to get a little more comfortable playing more reps and things like that. I think, you know, in, in the future, you know, he's going to be he's gonna be big time. So I think even day one, he still can be like a starter. Now, maybe you don't throw everything at him, but I think down the line, you're talking about, you know, 2022, 2023, you're talking about somebody who you're hoping expands his game to where, you know, he's a top 10, top eight uh, quarterback in the league. And that's what you should be hoping for at, at that pick. If he did that, would you want to keep Jimmy Garoppolo and let Lance sit behind him for a year? You know, I think ideally you, you would want to keep Jimmy, but even then, like, you know, Trey Lance didn't play this year really. I mean, outside that that one little playing you know, whatever that game was, little J- yeah. you know, JV, uh, what do you want to call it? Like a scrimmage game. <laughs> you know, so outside of the scrimmage game, he didn't really play. So 
there's one way, there's two ways to look at it. One, he hasn't played a whole lot. And it's like, well, let's sit him and let him develop. And then the other way to look at it is, well, he hasn't played a whole lot. So we need to get him out there and just get him as many reps as possible in game reps, that experience and get that going. Um, and then just work through whatever hiccups you have along the way. So, um, you know, I think, you know, either way they can go for it. You know, if they, if they get good compensation for Jimmy, it sounds like they're really open to trading him this weekend. They get mm -hmm. good compensation for Jimmy, then yeah, go ahead and, 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 uh, uh, you know, trade Jimmy away and just roll with whoever your rookie quarterback is. But if the team isn't really willing to give you anything, I think you're probably more benefit. You probably benefit more from just keeping Jimmy on the roster. Um, and then your rookie just doesn't have to play right away. But I think anytime you draft a guy at three, you, you want to get him in there eventually <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And the fans are going to be like wanting him in there as soon as possible. Right. Too. Yeah, um, the moment Jimmy messes up something, they're going to be like, get the rookie in there. <laughs> yeah, it happens everywhere. Um, yeah, I agree. I think the Niners are the most quarterback friendly offense and setup in the league. And so this is like the dream destination for a lot of these quarterback prospects. Um, I agree. I like Trey Lance a lot. I think he's my top quarterback. I would take him to San Francisco. I think he has the highest ceiling. Uh, he ran a pro style offense. Um, and, uh, Kyle Shanahan will get the most out of him. So I right. definitely understand that. But at the same time, Mac Jones is the most pro ready. You know, you can put him in there week one. He has a low floor. So you know what you're getting out of him. And so I understand both sides of that. Um, who do you think they go? I, do you think it's Mac Jones? Uh, that seems to be the consensus. Um, you know, you're starting to hear all these different reports. And, and I really think it's split. Um, I, I would say 60, 40 in favor of Mac Jones, wow. but I, you know, I still think there's a, a high chance and I'm giving it 40% chance that is Trey Lance. Wow. So, um, you know, that, that's, you know, obviously, you know, I think that's a lot closer than what they expected going into this process. I think it was like 98% yeah. Mac Jones. And then the more you get to know Trey Lance and the kind of kid he is and the type of professional that he is and, how wise he is ahead of his age. It's like, man, this is a bright 20 year old kid, yeah. six four, 230 pounds. Once you, it's one thing to see, watch film and see somebody. But when you get in that person's presence, you know what I'm saying? You go from, okay, I watched Mac Jones live, you know, it's like six two, two fifteen. 215, like, all right, you know, you see him miss some throws, maybe not the strongest arm, but it's like, well, I like his film a lot. His film is really good. So it's like, whatever. But then you get in the presence of somebody like Trey Lance. And it's like, damn, 6'4", 230 pounds, athletic, big arm. Yeah. Like, it's like an make all the throws. Yeah. Then you get to know him, and they're talking about that, you know, he was the brightest quarterback that they spoke with. And, you know, you start to hear all these things about his character and how hard worker, working he is. You know, they had him go work with uh, John Beck. Their, uh, they had him go work with John Beck, their uh, their, their quarterback coach. Yep. And, and Beck said – like, yeah, he missed some throws and he did some different things, but he's the first person I was like, listen, don't sugarcoat it with me. Let me know exactly where I need to get better. Like, what is it that I need to work on? And yes, he's like well. relentless with his work ethic. So those are the type of dudes that are whatever issues he has, he's definitely going to overcome those things because of his work ethic and the way he kind of goes about it. Not wanting to know, well, what do I do well? Where am I going to go? It's like, well, what do I need to work on? And those are the type of dudes in general, like just in life in general, like those type of people, they, they end up just going further in life. Absolutely. That's a good take on that. Now, let's look at Atlanta at four. Another interesting uh, spot because they could take the best playmaker, maybe tight end Kyle Pitts. They could go quarterback potentially, or they could trade back and try to get more picks and, and do all that. I think they're going to go Kyle Pitts. Um, for a long time, I was saying quarterback, but now I'm starting to think Kyle Pitts. What do you think for Atlanta? Um, can you repeat that? Sorry, my I got oh, no problem. What do you think Atlanta does? I was thinking. Oh, Kyle okay. Pitts. Yeah. So but what do you think? I, I can definitely see them go Kyle Pitts. You know, um, you know, they're talking about trading Julio Jones. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He's available. And that's straight out of the new general manager's mouth. You got a new coaching staff and everything. And they're just trying to figure out how to get back, you know, right with the cap and everything like that. So they're definitely open to trading him and kind of getting rid of him. So in that, from that standpoint, you know, it would be nice to, bring in 
you know, a young uh, threat, you know, especially, you know, whether it's tight end that presents, you know, mismatch problems to go with, you know, Ridley and, uh, you know, and, and Matt Ryan. So I can definitely see them going that way. If there was a scenario where they could trade down, it would be nice to see them kind of add to that defense. Like that was their weak link, link last year. Yeah. You know, they lost to the Dallas Cowboys in a shootout. You know, the defense, yeah. the offense scored, scored like 40 points, but the defense yeah. gave up like 43, you know? So they probably would like to see their defense kind of tighten up. They've lost a couple guys to free agency this year. Um, you know, defense isn't going to be sexy, especially in the top 10 this year. They're not expecting the defender to go until what? Patrick Sertain or, or JC yeah. Horn. Yeah. And that's maybe top 10, you know? So uh, if you are trying to beef up your defense, this definitely is not the draft as far as like in the top 10. So, you know, we'll see. I think the value says you probably go Kyle Pitts here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, um, I, I, I would have to guess Pitts is, is, is the way that they go. If, we're, if Julio stayed, then I probably wouldn't be saying that same thing. Like, it's like, well, okay, Julio. And I mean, it still looks good on paper, but it's just like, man, our defense is so bad. Yeah. So, Julio, maybe recruit some draft capital to where you can go at it, you know, with a Kyle Pitts in the top five. And then later, you know, whether it's a second round or whatever you get for Julio, you can start to really pour in a lot of resources at the defensive uh, spots. Okay. Um, what do you think of the Bridgewater trade today? Panthers trade quarterback Teddy Bridgewater to the Broncos for a sixth round pick. Do you think this opens the door for Carolina to maybe take a quarterback at, uh, mm -hmm. at their pick? You know, is is the way I think about things sometimes it's just a little different. Like, you know, I look at that situation and I'm just like, man, you know, you see Carolina and it's like they, they already said that they were gonna pick up Sam Darnold's fifth year option. Yeah. So I was like, well, if you're gonna pick up his fifth year option, like you you're committing to him for two years. So why would you bring in a rookie quarterback when you committed to Sam Darnold for two years? And if you pick somebody in the top ten, like you're expecting that guy to play at some point, whether yeah. it's especially like year one, like at year one, if he ain't starting right away. You want to work him in eventually, and I just think if you if you do that with Sam Donald, then you're you're clearly not looking to to you know it's like what, what that's that's it doesn't it does, that doesn't make sense to me. So from yeah. from their standpoint, you know if you if you're gonna make that trade and pick up his fifth year option, and they gave up some decent you know it doesn't look crazy because you know it's a future second round pick and all this, but they gave up decent draft capital just to draft a quarterback in the top 10 and pick up his option and waste all that money. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I think they maybe go cornerback or something like that. Um, I think that even for the Broncos, I think what it meant was, all right, you know, we got Drew Locke. We obviously, we want to see what we have, but maybe we're not comfortable with him just solely being the guy. So now we're going to bring in a veteran to compete with him. Ideally, you don't want Teddy Bridgewater to have to be a starter, but let's just push Drew Locke a little bit, see if he raises the game. You got Bridgewater, all right, and then, and then uh, you kind of just roll from there. So I think for both sides, it just to me it came off as if they are good with their situation. Now there are some people that think it has something to do with maybe who the 49ers are picking at three. Maybe that was a guy that they would have liked, and now the the, the quarterbacks aren't going to fall down the board like they typically would like. So you know, I guess that's another way to kind of look at that whole thing. Yeah, and that's the thing. Do you? Uh, there was some rumors today about the Patriots potentially trading up for a quarterback for Justin Fields or or something like that. Um, that could be a spot for Denver or Carolina here potentially if they want to trade back to get some, you know, from the Patriots. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, obviously the Patriots quarterback situation is a little sticky. They're not committed to Cam Newton long term or anything like that. So I think you know, just looking at it from that standpoint. <clears throat> They, they definitely have to kind of turn a new leaf, you know, mm -hmm. as to say, like, with, with, with that whole quarterback thing. Um, I'm interested to see, you know, what they do. I also, like, a little bit before you and I got on, saw some report about them potentially working out a contract with Jimmy Garoppolo. To yeah. Potentially pay for him. Yeah. So, um, I haven't looked into it. Like, I literally just saw that right before you and I came on. But, uh, you know, maybe Garoppolo is kind of an option for him. And, you know, I do think Jimmy Garoppolo – can definitely be a solid NFL starting quarterback. You know, he just got to stay healthy. So if that's, that's where they're leaning, they're familiar with him, I could see something like that happening. Yeah, it's always made sense. Well, I always kind of thought Garoppolo could end up back in New England. Um, who are some underrated prospects that you're going to keep an eye on in this this weekend on the draft? Oh, um, I'd say, like, underrated, underrated. Like, in a sense that people aren't really talking about him, I'd say one cornerback, Elijah Griffin. 
Okay. Uh, he's out of uh, U- USC. Um, he's actually the son of Warren G. <laughs> um, but uh, he's a good, scrappy court- cornerback, plays outside. Um, I think he has movement skills to be able to play inside, physical, physical guy. Um, he's smaller, but he plays like as if he's like, you know, like one of the little aggressive chihuahua dogs or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's scrappy like that. So um, and when I say smaller, I think he's like, you know, 5'11", 180 some pounds. Like he's just not big, but yeah. Um, there was a lot about his game that I liked him. And, and when I say underrated, I just think nobody's really talking about this guy. And I think he's talented. So, I mean, you know, he'll likely go day three. Where day three, I'm not sure because I just haven't heard anyone talk about him. He could go undrafted. I don't know. But wow. I know for my money, like if I'm, a, if I'm a team, I'm looking to potentially bring him in, you know, at the, you know, tail end of, you know, th- uh, day three, maybe sixth round or, or, or so, just so I know I have him on my team. Would you be worried about, there's been a lot of talk about Caleb Farley uh, with the back surgery and stuff like that. Are you, would you be worried about that? Or do you think that's something that you can kind of play through or be all right? No, I think anytime you start hearing anything about a back, like that yeah. has to worry you. So, you but, know, his back, that that's a, and, and we're talking about multiple surgeries now. And we're talking about like multiple surgeries since like the last time he played. So yeah. to me, that is definitely worrisome. Um, I think if, you, if you're talking about like second round, now we just have to take a flyer on him because I just think he's that talented. Mm-hmm. But first round, I I re- really try to stay away from him as much as possible unless I just absolutely just couldn't pass up on him. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I hope he has a good career. But, yeah, I mean, he's bound to fall. And uh, yeah. another one that could fall is like linebacker Micah Parsons. Like, I keep putting him in my top 10, but he seems to be falling in everyone else's uh, mock drafts. Yeah, why is that? Because, I mean, and again, I haven't watched any of the linebackers. I've spent more time watching, you know, corners, receivers, mm-hmm. talking about quarterbacks. Yeah. But why is it that he's he's falling? I, I saw that somewhere on Twitter today, too, where maybe some people are starting to be a little down on him. And, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. It seems like a freak athlete. Uh, run sideline to sideline extremely well. Yeah. But, I like him. I think he's the best uh, defensive player available. I really do. But I think, you know, there's some character concerns, that, you know, off the field stuff. Cho- I guess he, like, choked a teammate at some point or something. I don't know. <laughs> Damn. So that's not a good look. Hey, man, we all get into I got in several fights with teammates. So, I mean, <laughs> sometimes when you're just at practice, you're competing, you get irritated. Like, sometimes it just happens, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. So I, I can't knock him for that because I know I got into a few fights with, with teammates. Yeah, he of the moment you're out there competing. Shit happens. Yeah. You get <laughs> but, hot, irritated, you know, all type of stuff. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come on. It was good to get some insight. I know you're, you know, very educated on this stuff. And uh, I appreciate the time to be on the show. All right, for sure, man. Anytime. Thanks for having me on, bro. Yep, thank you. All right, thanks, fans. Uh, Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you think, and have a great week. Peace out.